welcome back to the Wildlife Garden Project. Today we're going to be giving you a few tips on things you can do to help reptiles and amphibians in your garden. I'm here with Jack Perks, who is a wildlife filmmaker who specialises in underwater filmmaking. He's been having a little bit of a route around in the pond, so what have you been looking for today, Jack? Well, I've been primarily looking for newts today, and I've actually got one in the net for you. OK, what type is it? So this is a smooth newt, so these are one of the more common newts that you're going to find in gardens. We can handle it, but just before we do that, we're just going to wet our hands. Okay. And the reason for that is we have lots of acids and chemicals that we pick up, and they can damage amphibian skin, so it's best to, right. to help them as much as we can. Okay. So if you just pick him up gently, okay. and this is a smooth newt, so this is one of the more common newts that you're likely to find in garden ponds. Um, they'll colonise ponds relatively quickly as well. Within it, if you have a pond, you know, maybe a couple of years, they'll find their way eventually. And they're absolutely amazing, you know, they'll lay their eggs in all the leaves and whatnot, and they'll spread quite quickly. And what other types of newt can we expect to find in our garden ponds? Well, we've got three native species of, of newt in the UK. We've got the smooth newt, palmate newts, which can be locally common, so in the southwest and, and more acidic ponds, you tend to get those. And then the rarer newt, great crested newts, they will actually go into garden ponds as well. And how about other species of reptiles and amphibians? Well, I mean, most of them will colonise ponds. I mean, common frogs, uh, they'll go into ponds, common toads, uh, slow worms, not so much the ponds, but compost heaps and log piles, things like that. Grass snakes will use that and ponds as well. So you, there's quite a variety that you'll find in gardens. And are any of these species struggling in the UK at all? Well, great crested newts, they're fully protected. You know, things like habitat loss, invasive species, pollution, they all affect great crested newts. One of the main things is a lot of ponds are, are being lost in farm ponds and things like that through drainage and just not being maintained. So they're losing their habitat. And this affects all amphibians, really. So by having a wildlife pond in your garden, you're providing a lifeline for not just rare species, but all amphibians. Ponds are often the first thing we think of, aren't they, when we think about garden features that can help amphibians. Um, but what are the specific benefits of having a pond in your garden? Well, all amphibians need to start off life in water. So ponds are ideal because they're slightly smaller, um, they've got lots of food for them, there's lots of protection for their young, and they're sheltered. And does it matter how big your pond is? No, I mean, people think that you need a big, deep garden pond for amphibians, but actually something the size of a kitchen sink is absolutely ideal. What advice would you give to somebody who was thinking about either building a new pond from scratch or maybe making an existing one more wildlife friendly? Firstly, I'd say definitely get a bit of shade on your pond. It stops the algal growth and it just means that the plant life doesn't go out of control. And what about the sort of depth? Does it need to be shallow, deep or... Well, it's good, it's good to have a, a mixture of it. So uh, the shallow area is good for frog spawn, for that developing in the warm spring sun. But also in the deeper areas, male frogs can hibernate in the winter. Having sloping sides is really important because it just means that the frogs can get out a little bit easier. But they will be able to get out of a more vertical bit, but it's, it's a lot easier for them if there's a, a gradual slope with stones, maybe logs, just to help them clamber over. I guess that's good advice generally for a wildlife pond, isn't it? For other wildlife as well. Yeah, anything, hedgehogs, birds, anything that might get in there, it just means they can get out a lot easier. OK, good. So how about vegetation then? What kind of things do we want to be planting? Well, lots of native plants, obviously, are the best ones to, for your garden pond. Stuff around the margins are really good. Let it get a bit out of control, a bit bushy. It just means that the frogs have got somewhere to hide. They've got lots of food to eat and insects and whatever. And then lots of different plants in the pond. So marginal plants, uh, lilies, those kind of things that are going to really beef up your wildlife pond. Should we have a look and see what we can find in this pond? Yeah, let's see. Yeah. I think I can see a common frog just chilling out in the shade. I can see he's poking his little head out there. Yeah. I got him. Ah, he got away. Ah. He got away. More too slow. Wily. I am too slow. Sorry I've let the side down. Oh, I know, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's keep going. We might get another one. Yeah, let's have another look. They seem to have wised up to the net a little bit, so I'm going to use my hands now. Uh, they're already wet, so it shouldn't, shouldn't damage the frog too much. Um, this is years of netting as a child coming into uh, coming into play now. So I'm just going to go really slowly. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Got ya. <laughs> wow, that was impressive. Like <laughs> no, it okay, was. <laughs> so this is a common frog. Wow. Hello, little dude. How do you go about holding a? OK, well, obviously you've got to be very gentle with mm -hmm. them. Wet your hands beforehand so we're not getting any acids on them. I'm just gently holding his back legs so he, he can't hop off, because if you hold him flat, he'll just jump off and we don't want to hurt him. So I'm going okay. to gently pass him to you. 
And then if you just grab his back legs. Whoop. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Hello. So tell me a little bit about common frogs. Well, as the name suggests, they are fairly common, but with declines in habitat in ponds and things, they have taken a bit of a turn for the worse in recent years. So garden ponds are fantastic habitats for common frogs. And how would you tell the difference between a frog and a toad? Toads have these large poison glands uh, behind the eyes, and that's obviously where they secrete it, so if anything tries to eat them. Frogs don't have these. Frogs aren't, or common frogs aren't poisonous anyway, so they're not going to uh, do that. Um, toads are, look slightly dry, or they can be slightly dry to the touch, whereas frogs will always be moist. Um, toads are a little bit more warty. Frogs generally, they're a bit more smooth to the touch, but obviously not everyone's <laughs> going to be holding frogs when they yeah, see them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and toads tend to hop or crawl, whereas frogs normally jump everywhere. Okay. Good stuff. Well, I suppose we better let this little fella back in this pond. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, okay. What other kind of habitats can people provide in their gardens for reptiles and amphibians? Well, other than ponds, anything that retains heat is always good, particularly for reptiles. So. Compost heaps such as this are absolutely fantastic. Lots of rotting vegetation. Hmm. That rotting creates heat, so things like grass snakes absolutely love this sort of thing. Lay their eggs in there and the young develop. Slow worms will be rooting around looking for any slugs, snails and, and beetles to eat. And of course all the amphibians that we've seen already today will, will love living in this. Okay, and what about, so log piles, rockeries, other things like that also yeah. have the same, serve the same purpose? Yeah, so, I mean, log piles, again, they rot at a much slower rate, but all the beetles and grubs live in there. That provides food, they provide shelter. I think anything that you're going to lay down uh, for reptiles and amphibians, just make sure there's a little gap and that it's relatively tight, particularly for amphibians, because they need a pocket of moisture in there to keep them, uh, to keep them nice and wet. So don't, don't leave too much room for them. And rockeries, they're more specifically reptiles, but they'll mm. go on there and they'll bask. Uh, to get the warmth. Okay, should we have a little bit around and see if we Let, can find anything? Let's have a look. You yeah? Know. Okay. Oh, look. Oh, look what I found. Yeah, there we go. A little toad. Oh, he's just buried in. I'll oh, just. Uh... There we go. Hello, little dude. Wow, beautiful little creatures. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about toads? So if you go back to the frog earlier, I mentioned about the glands. So frogs don't have it as much as these, but it's like a, a big poison glands behind the eyes and that secretes a toxin when something wants to eat him. Mm. Um, he's got the warts all over his body. And I don't know if you know, he's a bit drier than those frogs. They had a lot of mucus all over Definitely. their bodies. Yeah, it doesn't feel the slimy. No. It feels completely different. But I think toads have to be one of my favourite herb tiles. I mean, they're just so... They are cute looking, that's the only way you can describe them. But the other thing, this toad could be twice the age of us. I mean, they can live up to 50. That's they amazing. Quite, they are quite a long live. When you think frogs might be 10, 15 years old, um, you know, they've, they've got longevity on them. How old do you reckon this one could be? I reckon he's probably about maybe three, four years. So I reckon he'll probably be breeding next year, I would have thought. So how would you um, tell if this was a male or a female? The males have larger thumbs on their feet. Um, females are, are, are bigger in general as well. If you get a big toad, it's almost certainly a female. But one of the ways to tell them apart is if you get him, <laughs> if you hear that, it's not hurting him. Now, what I'm mimicking is in the breeding season, uh, another male might mistake him for a female and might get a bit amorous, hops on right. the back of him, and he's basically just saying, I'm flattered, but no, thank you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a boy. I'm not so, interested. <laughs> I'm not interested. <laughs> so that just lets the other toad know, right, I don't need to waste my time. I'm going to go find... A girl toad as well, okay. basically. So that's the best way to find and out. That's the best way, just to say, sorry, but no. <laughs> and don't worry, our intentions are good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, so shall we pop him back in? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Reptiles and amphibians are often overlooked in our gardens but they are fascinating and varied creatures. So if you take on board some of our tips, you may be providing them with a place to live, feed, breed and hibernate.